Welcome well, to KevJet, the podcast. We have the Chocolate Men's host, Luke. We have the main performer, Ten. Welcome. Yeah, what's up? Man? Hi there. My name is Luke. I'm the host, and we've got Ten. Oh, yeah, this is performer. just this is Ten from New York City, out in the UK. Yeah. So, how are you liking the UK? And first of all, what brought you to the UK? Um, so the owner of a uh, chocolate man, you know, when they were putting the show together, they adapted the show from a movie happening in America. So that kind of took fire and then they wanted to bring it here. And so with bringing it here, they didn't have any American performers. So obviously they wanted the essence of the American you know, to to be a part of the show. So they are went searching online for, for some American dancers and exotic entertainers, and they came across my page. And yeah, the rest is history. And did you find it hard to adapt to living in London? Are you in London or? Yeah, in London. Yeah, and did you find it like a lot to adapt to living in London? Yeah, because, yeah, because the cultures are so different. So like... You know, where I grew up in, in New York City is just like a whole thing in itself, right? Like it has its own like unique styles and, and words that we say that may be offensive out here to people. Even our jokes, it could be offensive. And I have to deal with that a lot of the time. Like people were always like, oh, you're being rude. And I'm like, that's that's cool over where I'm from. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to offend nobody, but like. Yeah, so I had to deal with a lot of that uh, being here and adjusting to the culture. I found that as well, just coming from Canada. I found it difficult to adjust. It took a long time. Yeah, it's, I'm still adjusting, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you, I'm, there's there's just, just still some parts, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like still, people sometimes even ask me, like last night we we done a show, and people were asking me like, oh, you, you don't have to put on that American accent. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, American. Like, I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's like like they were telling me like there's people that like actually put on fake American accents to claim no, that yes. they're from America. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. Wow. So how long have you been here? So I've been coming here since 2017. Okay. Yeah, back and forth, back and forth. And now I just got uh like a residency. So yeah, it's cool. Yay! <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> you know, that's that, that's hard to get residency in the UK, you know, like these days. Yeah, these days. How long have you been with the show, Luke? And how did you join the show? <laughs> I attended on my 30th birthday um, with a male friend of mine and two female friends of mine. And uh, one of our managers at the time called Dante he um he just walked up to me and he said, oh, you know what? I think like, you know, someone of your, you know, caliber could be helpful for the team. And I said, hell no. <laughs> I said, I don't think an out proud gay guy, you know, is needed for a strip show, you know, aimed at women. I said, I don't understand why you would need me, but here I am still. <laughs> yeah, so I've been, I've, been with, I've been with the company since 2018. So wow. one year after 10 started and one year after it all, you know, the whole company started. And so it's kind of like become this bigger thing than how it even started because you're introducing a bunch of new ideas for the show. So there's the brunch, not only the brunch, but you have the painting parties, the, the fantasy bus, there's embankment at the moment, isn't there? Yeah, What's we have our like? even show. Our evening show is split between a few different venues in London. Um, Embankment is, you know, the that one is the the bigger venue. You know, the like the venue is beautiful. The lights really do make our performance stand out. Um, that was an embankment, which is you know central London. We have our brunch, which is topless. Um, the guys are topless. It is a little bit more than like butlers in the buff or whatever. You know, the guys are doing games, they're lifting you up, they're bringing you down, they're spinning you around, everything. I mean, you've been to a brunch, so, uh -huh. you, know, <laughs> you, you know what to expect. We have we have party games, um, 
yeah, it was a good time. It's a good vibe. Um, but there's no nudity. Um, there's no like show per se mm -hmm. with the brunch guys. It's, it is, you know, drinks, food, party. Sometimes we do a performance. Um, sometimes, and that's kind of like if there's a, a bigger crowd, if you know, we just felt, feel that that is kind of like the vibe for that event. But usually it's there's no performance. However, for the evening show, it's X rated. The guys get fully nude. Um, some venues, unfortunately, we can't go fully nude just because of licensing. That's a big thing that we always have to ask in all venues because sometimes they'll say yes, sometimes they'll say no. And I mean, some of them don't even want to be topless. So we're like, how can you can't be topless and we're to be doing naked painting? You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, but in a lot of venues in London, it's, I mean, I, I always tell them, I'm like, look, it's a naked event. Can we be naked? Some venues are like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you get there and you get naked and they're like, whoa. Right. <laughs> it's like, like we did a, a performance in um end of summer one year. And then 10, he came out in his glory and um they wrapped it up. They were like, uh, no. <laughs> we were like, what do you mean? Like they turned off the music, turned off the lights. We were just like, excuse me. They're like, oh, we didn't know you were going to be that naked. And I'm just well, like, what's that naked? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, we're doing the strip show. Naked, like, right. What did you expect? Like, we didn't know yeah. it was going to be that naked. Exactly. I'm just like, what, what, what do you mean that? when naked? You know, like, that naked? Yeah, talking, <laughs> yeah, like, what do you mean? I don't know going to be that naked. Like, what do you think naked is? Like, and these things we have to go through all the time. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And our, um, our party bus, which is at the end of this month on the 28th, um, it is what happens on the step. What happens on the bus stays on the bus. You know, we don't have cameras. We don't have um, our photographer with us or anything. It's a it's a chance for people to just ride through London. There's forty to fifty seats on the bus. We've got our chocolate men. We've got our DJ, and you bring your own drinks onto the bus, and you have a good time. Um, me as the host, I don't want to know what people get up to in their personal lives. So it's literally about having fun. So those cool. are our four events that we do currently. So Ten, what's your background? How did you kind of get involved with this? Oh man, I used to be back in New York. I used to be like a um, personal trainer, a personal trainer, and a security guard, right? And um, I got fired from the security guard position because, like, girls will always come and talk to me. So they like, you know, what I mean, like, they was thinking like. I was at the party and like I used to tell them like no I can't talk to you right now and stuff like that and then like I ended up getting fired for it because the manager will always look at me from across the room like hey like bro you're always talking to girls and I'm like I'm not talking to them they're talking to me and I'm telling them I can't talk like that's all I'm telling them and so it was happening so much that I get fired I ended up picking up a second job doing security and I get fired for that one from this for the same thing. So like the second time I got fired, <laughs> for you, I, I, yeah, the second time I get fired, I go home and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, I can attract women, so I need a job that I can like I can talk to women, but not get fired for it. But I didn't know what that job was. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking like, man, is is it porn? Can I do porn? And I'm like, man, nah, I can't do porn. So I went to the gym the next day and like my, my friends were, and I was telling them like, oh yeah, I do this, I do this, I can do construction or whatever. If you hear about the job, uh, let me know. They were like, yo, why don't you strip? And I'm like, strip? Like, I don't even know how, I get, how, how to get into it. And he was like, yo, there's a guy that comes here. He does that. Maybe I could like, you know, link you two up and then he could tell you how, how, how to get into it. And so, like, yeah, the following day, he introduced me to that guy. And it was, like, a short little guy. And I was like, damn, he's a stripper? <laughs> like, I'm thinking, like, strippers were all, like, I'm thinking strippers were all, like, boom, big boom, and boom, muscular. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, well, shit, if he can do it, I definitely can do it. And, um, like, he just, like, took me to a show that, that weekend. And he was like, look, yo, just take your top off and walk around. Because you can't go on the stage because you don't know what you're doing. So he like a kind of like a butler thing, like how they do at the brunch. He was like, do that. Like, you know what I mean? So I was doing that. 
and in in America they give dollars, right? So they That's tip right. you. So I kind of just made like seven hundred in like one hour, just in <laughs> tips. So I'm like, wow. Like at the end of that night, I was just like, wow. I'm counting all these tips, and I'm like, wow. I was there for one hour and I made seven hundred, and I'm at this security job for about twelve hours, and I'm only making two hundred. Well, what have I been doing? Me. This is what I'm supposed <laughs> to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so that's how I kind of got into it. And were you nervous when it was the first time for you to like hit a stage and, and perform on stage in front of people? Oh, hell man. I was totally nervous. <laughs> like, I was totally nervous because like I went to this show and like there was some some guys that were more experienced than me and they seen me and they were like, yo, you're the future. We gonna we gonna take. They took me under the wing, and they were kind of like showing me the ropes and and showing me how to do this. So I kind of was on like they would have shows, and they would bring me to the shows to see how it goes, what you do, what you don't do. And so I was doing that with them for about a month, and then they were like, "Yo, now it's time for you to go to the stage." So that whole time, I was taking in different information, how to do this, how not to do this, what to watch out for, how to engage with the women. And I'm just like looking at what they're doing. And so like he took me to the first show. He's like, yeah, you going you going on stage because it was such a hype because I was like fresh meat. So it was such a hype amongst the girls. Fresh they were like, yeah, we want to see him perform now. Because they they seen all the other guy, but they like yeah. we want to see him perform, right? And and so I just kind of just like went along with the girls that were most into me. I choose those girls, and it made my show a little better because you know they were already into me. So whatever they were doing wild, I would just like okay, pick you up, okay, move a little with you, lay you down. You know what I'm saying? And so they just worked with me, and it helped me get through it. But I was. Totally nervous. Totally nervous. And did you, do you find the audience in the UK different to the audience in America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they're different because <laughs> like, yeah, they, they totally. It, it's totally different, but it's like <laughs> in the UK, it's like almost like they show a little bit more love than America. Like the girls in because, America. I think that's because you're American. You know, like if I was in America, then they'll care more about me than you because I'm British. Like because you are an American in the UK, you already have that, oh my God, he's American here. So you automatically kind of get that boost already, you know? No. You don't feel that. Because I get no. this, I get the same love in America. It's the same when I come in America. It's the same way. But the difference is the girls there like to act like they don't like you when they do. You know what I'm saying? They they oh, okay. play like a, mm, yeah, that's game. okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's okay. So but us here, London folk, we're a bit more open. Yeah, they, they're, not, they're not afraid to express, you know, admiration for you a little sure. bit more than the U.S. is. You know what I mean? Sure. Let's go over to Luke. So what's your favorite part of, of hosting this event? It's actually interacting with the audience. You know, it really is interacting with the audience. Um, Ten can tell you for nothing. I get really stressed very easily at work. <laughs> I get stressed very easily at work. Um, but I do like interacting with the ladies and getting to know people. It's also nice that our LGBTQ guests, they feel welcomed at our events as well. Um, when I started working in 2018, there was no representation, you know, LGBTQ wise. Whereas nowadays, everyone's visible and everyone's happy, everyone's inclusive, everyone's open. So um, that's that's my happiness, you know, because like I said, six years ago, it wasn't happening. Yeah. But, you know, six years oh, later, totally visibility good. is much better than it oh. was for or everybody. Totally. So that's my best part. Yeah. <laughs> and my I best mean, part, my best, my best part is merging together. Me and 10, oh my God. When was it 10? Like three weeks ago? Was it three weeks ago when we were at Camden and um, we were both on stage together? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way 10 does his music, he has like the first, let's say the first half, it's a lot of music that we would recognize that you can dance along to. 
So me and Ted, I always get up on that stage and I, I it is so fun. I won't lie. It is extremely fun when you get that atmosphere of the stage is popping, the crowd is popping, the DJ, everything's like is up here. So you can, own, the only thing you can do is match that energy. Um, and that's one thing like that 10 does do extremely well. Um, and when you are in that, even if you are a boring person, I've seen like boring people like no i am married my husband's at home and my children but like as soon as some performers come on stage they are running up to the stage throwing dollars and shaking it like we you know we have a performers that can bring that emotion out of you we don't want no one sitting on their seat when you know what i mean like have fun jump up so i you know i have fun as well and i jump up and i get in the mix as well so those are my best parts of hosting what's the biggest misconception about performers 10 do you want to take the lead on that one come on you know do you know the number one thing i um, know, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, maybe you want you, to take you it. you you got you got all number the one are they, they like, got number one here, here, here. you know are what they get you know always the biggest misconception is if they're gay or not they are all straight they're not gay second question is is it real or fake it's all real ladies and gentlemen out there there's no fakes there's no Pisos, that it's all real genitalia. And oh, what's another one that the people always think? They always think that the boys are out here in the streets, you know, that's, that's, sleeping that's with what everyone, I'm and that is that's, not that's, it. And that is, that's, that's that is what I'm not saying. it. Like, so even last night, like after the show, right? It's like people don't, don't look at it as, you know, a, a job. like you're a performer anymore. So it's just like, once you go on the stage and you do an act, it's like, oh, that's who you are. They don't understand that I'm a real person. Like, you know, after the show, I'm a dad. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I have I have children. Like, so, you know what I'm saying? I got to be a dad. Like, they don't even understand that. So I was at a show yesterday. I've done the show, whatever. And, like, you know, sometimes we have an after party and a lot of the, the customers you know, come to the after party to mingle and meet the guys and meet all of us. And so, like, you know, I got to uh, take pictures with people, smile, shake hands, be friendly, have a little chat with them and stuff like that. And so a lot of girls see that and see me and they say, yo, you 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 chatting to all the girls. And I'm like, how am I chatting to all the girls? Like, I'm an entertainer. These people came from the show and they want to know me personally now. I'm not on the stage. I'm more chilled and relaxed. We're all ha having a nice time. And people are going to conversate with me, asking me where I'm from, where I'm there. So it, it, from across the room, again, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's the mm. same thing I got fired for in the job. Like, <laughs> So from across the room, you know, if a girl's looking at me, you know, she thinks this is what I'm doing. I'm just picking up girls. But no, I'm just an entertainer. And people want to get to know me personally, like, because now it's, you know, it's a time where it's chill. I'm not on the stage. It's not a show going on. It's more chilled and relaxed. They feel like, you know what, I could probably ask him a few questions that I have, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what it is. Yeah. We should but, do like, a Q&A. We should do a Q&A at the end. Credit. People don't give us that credit. Like, we human beings, like, it's just like yo, you see superhero. You don't you don't care nothing about life, or or you just like sleep with a bunch of girls and that's it. Like, and it is is far from the truth. Like you know what I'm saying. And and like I said on another thing before, it's like people don't judge the actor in the movie when he's playing a role. He can be married. They know he's married in real life, but he could have a, a, a wife in the movie, do a, a whole love scene with her, and nobody judges him. But like if if mm -hmm. I do a scene on the stage, I'm not penetrating anybody. But now like I'm like a guy that's just, you know, after girls. It's just crazy. But people they can't compartmentalize that. How does that affect um personal relationships? Um, it, it, it can affect it. it. It, it affects women that aren't insecure. Women that, that aren't, that aren't secure. They look at that as a threat to them. Right. Cause like, oh, I'm probably going to have to be dealing with girls all the time and, and this and this and that. And so, 
you know, probably the initial wanting to, if they like me and then they see what I do, they're probably like, nah, I can't deal with him like that. So it affects it that way. Like I don't get the opportunity to be myself and be a human being to somebody because of what I do. You know what I mean? It might turn people off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I was just thinking. Cause if you meet somebody new and you're really into them and then at what point do you tell them what your job is? Yeah. Is it because society makes it like a dirty lifestyle? That's you right. know what I'm saying? And, and don't get me wrong. There's some dirty guys in the lifestyle, but not everybody's like that. It's, it's any profession, you can have a creep. You can have a, mm. a guy that's like this in any profession. And so, so, like, it doesn't mean everybody's like that. So, so for me, like, because I'm, like, the main guy at the show, I still keep respect for myself, right? I don't, like, spread myself around to everybody because I don't, you know, that's going to devalue me. How are you going to be the top guy and everybody's had you? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're going to devalue yourself. So I, I can't do that. And that's something that I'm conscious of. What's the bonding like uh, with the group of guys? Are you guys all really supportive of one another? Is there I any competition? I absolutely hate all of them. I hate <laughs> them all equally. <laughs> me, and you know what? Me as a open, proud black gay guy, they really do protect me without me noticing. Um, and I always say this example, this one guy was giving me hassle, but I wasn't actually paying attention to him. And the guy was uh, trying to step to me, but then one of our guys called Tank and Ken, they both like grabbed the guy and like, like held him off, like way off me. And I didn't even notice. I was just like, what's going on back there? Like, I just literally didn't know that someone was trying to come for me because yeah. of who I am. So, um, they, we, we, we roll together, you know, like if there's a problem with one of us, there's a problem with all of us. Um, but we, we we do have equal respect for each other. Now, if it's a problem, you know, then boys can hustle it out as boys, just like girls are going to hate girls. You know, it's just human nature. But we do have a a safe commodity amongst all of us. Yeah, but sometimes there's obviously we get into disagreements like any no, any brothers picture. and sisters or any family members, you're going to have different quarrels hand in. But like at the end of the day, we, we can all respect each other and, and get along to, you know, meet the requirements of the show and do the show and do our job. And that's it. Yeah. Good. As a male performer, do you look at female performers in a different light? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You, you know what's funny? Like when when I first when I, I, I when I didn't when I wasn't in this profession, I used to judge female strippers until I got into the the business and people were judging me. And I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm not like that. Like so and I would see how people would just put this stereotype on me. And I was like, man, I'm not even like that. Like, people don't even take the time to know me anymore. Like, once you do that, it's like, we don't want to know you. We know you already. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, we already know what you are. Like, you're just about girls. This is what you do. And that's it. They don't know anything else beyond that. And they won't give you no credit but to know you beyond that. They already have their mind made up. That's it. And so once I was dealing with that, I had to think about, how women deal with it too, right? Like, man, there must be some good women out there doing that work. Maybe she's just doing that as a side thing. Maybe she's doing that to feed her family, feed her children. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And she does have respect for herself, but she's just doing a little thing like that. She's not, you know, letting anybody touch her. She's doing a little dance and she can be judged for that. You know, maybe guys look at her a certain way, right? And so... Yeah, I always kept that in mind, but like, uh, yeah, I, I look at uh, female entertainers differently now. Um, I used to work for Stream at Rhino um, when it was open before the pandemic. Um, and I worked like full time with the female strippers as well as with the chocolate men. And I'm telling you for now, boys and girls, the strip club, if you're in a good strip club, the protection that female performers actually get from like, the front door is it's great. Like I had girls get cabs home um, that either we paid for as a company or our bouncers would take them to, you know, their door, like their cab door or their car door to make sure that they were safe getting home. Um, in terms of like 
you know, men and, you know, the male attitude to women, like female p- performers and stuff, again, our stage area, a man can't go anywhere close to the stage when there's a female on stage. Like, the bouncers will be on you like a hawk, like, ASAP. Like, there's no sex in the clubs, you know, there's no fiddling, there's no none of that stuff. Like, the female, like, my girls were always 100% protected. And that's the way it's supposed to be, especially in a central London, you know, gentleman's club. Um, unfortunately, there are unlicensed places, you know, brothels, whorehouses, all of this stuff in and around London, mm-hmm. like in and around London. So touched wood, thank God, like I've only had decent experiences from, you know, top end. It's not even being snobby, say in top end strip clubs, but like work for somewhere top end because you get top end um you get top end safety, to be honest. But if you're going to go to like some ghetto club in the end of, you know, Bethnal Green or something, then, you know, don't go there. I'm not reading Bethnal Green, by the way. It's just an example. <laughs> I was just gonna... <laughs> I, 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 not, not that I know. But I, just for example, like go into a zone one central London club because you get, you are protected. Do you know what I mean? Like don't go anywhere under, anywhere undesirable. So, in London, any given night, there's many, many shows that people could go to. Why should they come to your show? And that's for both of you. Ken, you go first. Um, well, I think you should go to come to my show or our show, um, because it's 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 a different show. You know what I mean? It's not the it's not a typical show from all the other shows that's happening. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, a different genre. It's different type of, of performances going on that, you know, you don't get anywhere else. No, no other, no other company like this that does adult entertainment like this does the type of show that we do. None, like none like that goes fully nude this way and does a performance and and has uh lots of tricks and 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 all that stuff going on like I don't I don't like I I know that the other company they they got like a a, a cool little stage performance and and that stuff and you know uh production and stuff like that but like they still don't have that like mm. Mm, that that thing you know what i mean so i think that like it's something that is not out there in london like that and it's somewhere that you can get this difference if if that's what you into um what i would say about the chocolate men um like again i came on my 30th birthday so i came as a customer you know what i mean so i was i was set to go anyway but um we are a hundred percent fully butt naked. Like everything's all out. You, you know, we are the only company that do that in London. I don't think any others do. And we're all black. Um, we are we are all black. Um, we we do buy buy into that. Um, I've been getting asked loads of questions recently. Ten, they're like, oh, um, do you think it's um like a like a sexually racist thing and all this stuff? I'm like, no, it is not. Like. I'm like, it literally is not. They're like, oh, do you have more white people that come to your show or black people? I'm just like, what kind of questions are these? I said, that's not a thing. You know, that's not a thing for us. Like, you come and enjoy the show. Like, it's not about, you know, a white or a black thing. It is literally just coming to see a show. It is 100% naked. We also have interactive games. We have interactive experiences. Like, you can't, you won't come to our show and be bored. I guarantee you. I, I just think that it's, it's, it's cool to have different like a a main cultured show like you know what i mean like when when back in the days when it was just chippendales it was no, but that one, one type black of performer one yeah, black it, performer it was like mo- it was like mostly one type of race you know what i mean and like even if they had like a a tokyo strip like you know what i mean that would be that type of race like i think yeah. it's cool to have that that variety you know what i mean and like you know, so people can go to their preference. Yeah, like we are the chocolate men. We are all black. You know, we are all different shades of brown. 
Um, like, look, even people want. even the LGBTQ community, community, they have their own type of strip shows. So, they get like, down uh, in it. <laughs> is that is is that a form of racism? You know what I mean? Because all uh, all, all the entertainers are, are gay. So, is that a form of racism? You know what? Like, I think we've met like with performers like that. Like, we know how like gay strippers. Like, I've seen loads of gay strippers. They get down, uh, uh, down. You know, they have fun. Um, whereas like with us being branded the chocolate men, like we've already, you know, like we we know that there's a niche in the market for it. You know, like that. Well, they well we are the niche, I, I, I guess, because in other companies there'll be like one or two people of color in the mix. And I just don't ever really feel like they're treated fairly in those companies. Um, so there's that. And that's not being shady, that's just me being honest. Mm -hmm. What is some sort of, what is etiquette that you expect from the guests when they come to a show? Is there etiquette or do you expect? Oh, there should be etiquette. <laughs> there yeah. should be etiquette. I always say to the guests, please don't jump on stage. Don't throw your panties on stage or your wigs. Or don't fight. We have we've had ladies fight each other on stage. Like it, ridiculous. Like, throwing drinks, throwing themselves. Like it is crazy. Like it gets down. Um, but we we do welcome it. You know we do welcome it. But like there is a limit. Like always safety of the performer. Um, I think sometimes these guests think that the men are um like blow up dolls. Like and, like they're human beings. You know you, like, you can you can touch them. It can hurt. You know like don't jump on him in your high heels you know what I mean like I think some people still do treat men in general as oh take it on the chin oh you're a dude you'll be all right like no like you can't throw you know like a bucket of water at someone's face and expect to just be happy you know what I mean and some 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 guests are rude some guests are rude and that's unfortunate but um you know that's the, the only way we can combat bad behavior is by asking them not to do it or by asking them to leave and how do you and feel ten? about that, Ten? Do you is is there behaviors that you absolutely do not like? Yeah, I don't like when when women put like the the dollar bills or tissues in my butt crack. I hate that. Or or they try to they try to like grab my. <laughs> so, <I> mean, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious because like you know when you just take off your trousers and it's just like dollar bills just like. Bloop. Just no, but in. these girls try to stick it in. Yeah, like, right in the ill. Like, I'm just like, why I'm like, you yo, what are you that? doing? Like, stop that. Like, or they try and... to like yank my thing off. Like, they try to yank the meat off. Like, that's it's crazy. Like, what are you doing? Like, it's not gonna come off of me. Like, what do you think? This is a fake piece. Like, yeah, those are the two things I I, I don't like. Like, yeah. And again, in the same respect, if a man was going to do that in a strip yeah. club and there's a female on stage, hell no. Mm -hmm. like I said, like, like, you can't even approach, like, you can't even be too close to the stage. Like, there's at least, like, a six feet, about a foot difference, you know, between, like, a, a man has to be to a stage. You can't be right approaching the stage at all. But, um, yeah, hear that, ladies? No ganking down the pants and... Don't stuff dollar bills up people's booty cracks, please. <laughs> I would put it on a t shirt. Yeah. What's your favorite part of the show, Ten? Um, uh just when when the crowd is into to my show, when I'm doing the show and like I have everybody like into it and the energy is high and and everybody's like if if I'm say like move this way and we and I'm doing a dance and we moving this way and they just like following me it's just I know I have the crowd in mm -hmm. in a trance and and yeah it's one and the energy is high and everybody's clapping and having a good time like that's the best part of the show like yeah that's the best part. How do you guys chill at the end of the night when everything's done? Yeah, so. At the end of the night, we, we usually go to an after party. And so we have like a table there. We get a couple of bottles of drinks that the owner provides for us. And um, like, yeah, we just mingle with people that came to the show, you know, and like just have a couple of chats and just have a good time, like a good time out. Music is playing all different genres of music. And, and the after party already has a club going on. We just add to it. 
And so, like, yeah, it's just mingling with everybody and just having a, a, a good time where people could get to know you personally. Our after party is in central London off Oxford Street. So um, because it's central London, it's recognisable for everyone to get to. You know, it's very, you know, you can you can get there real easy. And for people that come to any of our events on that day, whether it be a brunch, naked drawing, or the show, they can come to the after party for free. And how do you guys keep a regular schedule so that you're not burned out? Because it, I, we, I can weekly, imagine, baby. I can it's imagine, weekly, baby. yeah, you would have, it would be easy to we, we just... Get, we, look, we get burned out, but there's enough people to cover people so we can still have almost every week, you know, every every weekend we've got to be on, you know. Um, if, and, if we're not, and if we're not on for that weekend, we've got another show somewhere else or out of London. We still have a, a tour that we do for half of the year. Um, we did one and this time last year and then from May to about no, so March to about May this year so if we're not in London and <laughs> then we'll be out of London um, but we do try to keep it one or two events like a week so one or two events a week sure and as a performer do you prefer the tour or do you prefer to be in London oh I mean I prefer to be on tour you know, just going <laughs> to uh, different cities and meeting people in other cities that it's not, you know, this is like the home base here in London. And, um, you know, just getting out and branching out into other cities and other towns and meeting those people that never seen a strip show before, never met a, a guy from America before. So, yeah, it's very interesting and exciting to, like, go to those cities and just, you know, you know me traveling around I, like, I, I love it where can the audience find out about all of your events that are coming up they can go to our instagram at the chocolate men uk and we have our website which is the chocolate men.com perfect that's what, where we get all of our info <laughs> what, are you, what are you guys most excited about in the future for the chocolate men well, upcoming, we do have the bus, and because they are themed, and I love a theme, of course, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I am ecstatic. I am. I love a theme. So that's going to be my jam until the end of the year, and then leading up into our 2025 tour. Cool. And what are you most looking forward to, Tan? Yeah, just a little... Um... The little uh, things that we have going on, such as the buzz, just things that are like not just the show. It's like we offer little things like that. Like we we make the tours, obviously. I'm excited for that. Just going out and branching out and expanding our show and putting it in the faces of other people in other cities. But like, again, like the bus, the bus stuff, the little things that we do outside of the show like that. I like those little things like that because you know it it, it brings like like say you got the the brunch you got the 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 buzz you got the tour you know you got the paint and sip like yeah all of these things is just all a little collection of little things that you know outside of the main show we we offer we also offer privates I always keep forgetting this we also offer private so if people you know want a chocolate man for their birthday hen party that they're doing privately you know, at home or whatever, they can always book a chocolate man, but you have to do that via the website. Mm -hmm. Easiest way to do it is via the website. Perfect. Well, thanks, guys. Love chatting. Thank you. For, thanks for having us. I'm going to come Thank out you. to you guys. Well, next our next time. show is on the 21st of September. So Saturday, the 21st in Archway, I believe. Or it might be in, in, in the embankment one. Um, but I will invite you. You can come with some guests. Just let me know. Um, and yeah, thanks okay. for having us. Loved our chat. I'll come out and see you guys. And uh, I'll share all of your information online. And uh, just keep giving the world what you're doing. Woo, woo, woo. Thank you. <laughs> see you later, matey.